Hi, we're Ken and Lindsay from Ken Goes Cruising and we're lucky enough to have been cruising for the last 30 years. In that time we've sailed with P&O 40 times, so I guess you could say we know a little bit about the brand. There are various ways that you can contact us, including through our website. We have a contact us page on there and you can ask us any question you like. We'll try to answer it. One of the most popular questions that we get asked is what is the difference between a saver fare and a select fare on P&O and which one should you choose? Well, we thought we'd do a little video about it and try to help to explain your choices. So, here we go. In fact, it's not even that simple. There are three different fare types. Select, early saver and saver. As you can probably predict, we've done all three. So how do we choose which type of fare to book? The choice between early saver and saver is simple. It's down to the point in time that you book. The saver fare is only available for last minute bookings and can be a great price, but not always. And as you can see on the screen, the saver conditions are very restrictive. You do not get to choose your cabin. Your dining will be allocated on arrival. You must pay in full at the time of booking and there is no refund for cancellation before sailing. The second option available is early saver. With this fare, you don't get to choose your cabin, but there is an opportunity of upgrades after the select fares have had their choice. Also, you probably won't get your first choice of dining time style and choice of table size, as the select fares take priority. The final choice is select fare. This is usually the most expensive option. But is it the best value for money? This is what we hope to try and explain in this video. The answer is not obvious and is different for different passengers, depending on their personal tastes and choices. Let's begin with the first aspect, which is very easily measured, and that's purely financial. Things like the cost of the cabin, onboard credit, and then the choice of one of the three additional options, coach travel, car parking or additional onboard credit. At this point, we should point out that on fly cruises, you do not have a choice of the other three options. However, the amount of onboard credit does seem to be higher than normal. In order to help us understand these variations, I created a spreadsheet that should put things into a logical order. Included in the spreadsheets are three subjective values that are personal to the individual and can vary based on the individual cruise. How important to you is the location of your cabin? Do you have mobility issues? Are you a light sleeper and need to have cabins above and below you? Do you suffer from seasickness? All these things could be important to you and may mean the position and choice of your cabin is more or less important. For this 24-night Caribbean cruise on Aurora, I've rated the perceived cabin value as high at £100. This is because you have 24 nights on board and are doing two transatlantic crossings and being at a cabin at the front of the ship could become quite uncomfortable. Whereas on this 14-night Caribbean cruise on Avia, I've given a rating of £50. As the seas are usually much calmer, the value of dining choice on both Arvia and Iona are zero because there is no choice, whereas on Aurora there is a choice of club or freedom dining. With the select price you have a flexible fare option. Is the ability to change your cruise after you've booked it important to you? If so, then rank this with a monetary value. On all of the ships apart from Arvia and Iona, the select fare offers you dining choices. How important is this to you? Do you wish to choose first sitting, second sitting or freedom dining? How much is this worth to you, if anything? Do you often take shuttle buses into the local town or do you walk or take excursions or maybe a mixture of all three like us? If so, the select fare gives you complimentary shuttle buses if they are provided by P&O. If you have to pay for them, they usually range from about four to six pounds per person each way. I have prepared a sample of three spreadsheets. For the purpose of this demonstration, I have shown the costings based on two people sharing and coach travel from Liverpool. 
So our first spreadsheet is based on a 14-night Caribbean cruise on Arvia, sailing on the 29th of November 2025. As you can see, I've pre-populated the spreadsheet with the early saver price and the select price. And as you can see down here, the select price is more expensive. The only other thing I've populated is the onboard spending money, which on this case is £350. So I'm now going to put in um, shuttle bus costs, um, which are £10 for a couple each way and I said that on this cruise I'm going to have four of them giving me a cost of £40 is quite reasonable we can still see that the uh, cost down here select is still more expensive then if we add in my perceived values of the cabin so I'm going to put in a perceived value of the cabin here at £50 for my cabin choice and perceived valuable for flexible booking I'm going to put £30 in there because I think it's well worth that. Now you can see that actually the select fare has come out as a better deal than the early save fare. Now these are obviously subjected and depend very much on the individual, as does the shuttle bus cost, depending on how many you're likely to take. So that's one example. If we now come on to sample 2, which is a 24-night Caribbean cruise on Aurora, return to Southampton on the 2nd of November 2025, based on an inside cabin. So again, you can see I've put in the early saver and select fares, and I've also added in the onboard spend of £130. In this case, because there are lots of days at sea, I've still only kept the shuttle bus trips to four which I'll now enter them in um, I've also got the perceived value of cabin choice now because we're many many days at sea and crossing the Atlantic and I wouldn't want to be stuck at the front of the ship in an inside cabin I put a higher choice into there and the flexible booking I've kept the same at 30 pounds now the other thing on here, because you're on one of the older ships, you have a perceived value of dining choice. Now that's reasonably important as well, because I wouldn't want to end up on Freedom Dining, so I'm going to put a value of £40 in on there. The other thing that I need to put in is the bus transportation, which is based on travel from Liverpool. And the cost of that for two people is £220. You can now see that there is very little difference in the cost between the two. The early saver being slightly more expensive than the select price, but that very much depends on what values you place on these items, and that's individual and personal choice. Here's our third sample, which is a seven-night Northern Europe cruise on Iona on the 1st of November 2025, and this is based on a balcony cabin usual I've already put the two prices in um, and the onboard spending now shuttle bus costs on this because it's only a seven day cruise I've just put in two trips on there giving a total of 20 pounds bus transportation unfortunately is the same so I'll just add that in um, and then the perceived value of cabin choice again you're only on for seven days so you can put up with a bit more on a seven day cruise than you can if you're on there for 24 days um, so I'm just going to put in uh, a nominal £20 into there and then the flexible booking thing well that's still quite uh, important I think they're the same right the way through so if we now look to the results on here the early saver price is 12.78 and the net cost of the select price is 1218 pounds so if these things are important to you and you're taking bus transportation from Liverpool obviously if it's from Scotland or further afield it's higher but even if you're just coming down from Birmingham it's about 195 pounds for two people so there's your choices um, it's up to you at the end of the day how much do you value these items? If you're not bothered about the subjective items, then the early saver fare will usually be cheaper, but sometimes not by much. There are also ways to avoid those unfavourable cabins when booking an early saver fare. If you 
don't want a cabin at the front of the ship or a cabin that doesn't have views that you want, then choose Save a Fare with a grade above those categories and don't select the upgrade option. I hope this has helped and made it easier for you to make an informed choice of which fare type is the best for you. If you have any specific questions, please put them in the comments below or contact us on our website. Oh, and one more thing. If you found this helpful and would be interested in more information like it or would just like to see what we get up to on our travels, why not subscribe to the channel? We also hold regular live streams on YouTube and there you can not only ask us questions but you can also ask questions of other people within our community. Via the website you can also subscribe to our little newsletter and that gives you just a few extra bits and pieces about our life here and our life cruising. Thanks, Thanks for, for watching, watching and, and keep cruising! cruising.